Hi, I am Zorodi Smosin. Warm welcome to my channel. For full understanding, keep watching till end. Let's refresh our biological info about tiny dangerous players who play with the ordinary lives of other organisms like bacteria, invertebrates, vertebrates, plants and almost all lives including you. Dangerous in the sense that they ruin the health of other organisms or even kill them either by intruding into somatic or germ cells to reach DNA and hijack the genetic machinery of host for their own replication or altering the membrane receptors to mislead the functioning of cells. Don't be shocked, I am talking about biological viruses. Today we shall learn about The word virus has Latin origin which literally means slime, liquid, poison. In late Middle English, this word was used for venom of a snake and in scientific understanding, virus is a substance produced in the body as the result of a disease which is capable of infecting others. How viruses originated during the course of life origin, either through special creation or something else? Let's review most famous three hypotheses about origin of these silent intruders. Sadly speaking, there is nothing to be universal like cells are building blocks of bodies. Origin of these amazing, oh no, smart buddies is still under debate. Despite having latest bioinformatic tools, life science warriors are still fighting to capture the whole scene. Let's have a short view to learn. Number 1. Virus first hypothesis Claims that the first organism ever created from simple molecules like proteins and nucleic acids were viruses, especially RNA viruses. They gave rise to other cellular life. In this sense, they are our forefathers, but it is contradictory to basic definition of viruses which needs host for their application. And by the way, what were their host then? Further modifications are mandatory in this case. Number 2. Reduction hypothesis suggests that viruses originated from small organisms like parasitic bacteria which used to infect other organisms that is their host. If it is correct, then why scientists are still unable to find any similarity? Because even smallest parasites don't match any way with viruses. Modifications are needed. Number 3. Escape hypothesis. Predict that viruses were created from DNA and RNA fragments of other organisms which escaped the cells anyway and started to live borrowed life. But again, the capsid proteins and structures found in viruses are not even seen in any single organism known. Again the same case, think, think and think. If you have any universal solution, please comment down. Hope you got the idea that what difficulties our life science genius are facing in case of tiny mysterious creatures. Let's dive into something more complex which has made virologists of times to sit back and think. Let's talk a bit about the evolution of these tiny intruders. Did they evolve or sent from other planets here in as revenge? Just kidding. Paleovirologists who study fossilized life history of viruses which are now extinct have giant heads to sort out the mystery that how viruses evolved. Being just to share with you there are no direct fossils of viruses preserved in mineral rocks like other organisms which can be morphologically analyzed. The reason is that viruses are so small, even smaller than the finest particles of sedimentary rocks. So if not impossible, still much difficult to zard them out directly. But virologists are not accepting defeat, they are working on it. Virologists have adopted indirect ways to construct phylogeny of viruses. Among these methods, one is to study the respective host of virus in which the bodies reside and reproduce. 
you must know that retroviruses are the dna fragments which have been incorporated into dna of host by viruses and now they are part of dna's of host so by studying the retro elements in the dna's of host led virologist to construct the life tree to some extent can you tell whether viruses adopt the darwinian evolution or not answer is yes to some extent because when viruses produce large number of genomes with numerous mutants some of them are more competent which simply outnumber others in this way we can say that natural selection occurs in viruses some viruses have high retention rates of mutations especially rna viruses who change more rapidly than dna we know that dna machinery has the procedures to correct itself after application and you know rna once formed is not part of dna anymore so rna once formed in any pattern would sustain and hence mutations are alive and ready to rock next similarly present non viruses are sequenced using sequencing techniques and compared with the retro elements of dna's of host and highly matching sequences are linked together to construct phylogenetic tree using molecular clocks hope you got the theme point have you read or listen this word before quasi species if yes then excellent if not then let's understand today quasi mean apparently seems but not present really you may understand it like an illusion on road when normal species produce new generation there is a minute change in the genetics and if we compare this change with the whole genome it is very small almost negligible because of large genome size for example among 3 billion base pairs in humans if two or three base pairs are mutated the percentage of change is very minute that's why humans have high fidelity i mean exactness to their parents and so are easy to predict the parentage using dna but in case of viruses genome size is very small even a single base pair mutated has high impact relative to higher organisms so fidelity of viruses is low to parent in this scenario a virus produces millions of copies with a variety of newborn having different genetic makeup similarly when newborn will infect other cells they even change further even reverse mutations may also occur which result in a kind of dynamic equilibrium of mutations in this scenario it is difficult to sort out the exact parentage hence egen and suster suggested groups of most related viruses with high mutation rates and how uh, very uh, with a fidelity very low as uh, quasi species they classified viruses as clouds or groups of viruses with similarity and not single species these groups or clouds of related viruses are termed as quasi species if you are not clear about feel free to comment down let's have a little revision about composition based types of viruses viruses are composed of either proteins or nucleic acids or both with lipid layer on capsid in some of them most misfolded uh, uh, proteins causing malfunctioning are termed as prions for example cjd uh, creutzfeldt jakob disease in humans is caused by prion protein viroids have only rna they are smallest of all pathogens they attack plants and uses polymerase to to replicate in the cytoplasm of host phages are viruses of bacteria they are consisted of outer protein coat called as capsid enclosing nucleic material dna or rna in some cases an additional lipid layer outside the capsid rna viruses are considered as most smart in cheating the immune system cheating really yes they are smart escapers how they do this let's understand due to rapid mutations they act very smartly by disguising or escaping immunity they are smart thieves 
they are difficult to catch and hang all at once what strategy they adopt is very clever they mutate and change the receptors which are known to immune cells as antigens so one type of vaccination would not be enough for those who are smart and have many serotypes before we identify new ones they change further and this chase go on hopefully we will win soon after catching them all before their life threatening attacks if the video was useful hit like press subscribe push bell and share the link to your dear ones to whom you care about thanks and stay tuned for next update